Lancashire police are investigating the brutal murder of businesswoman and mother Sadie Hartley. Evidence is beginning to mount, and now forensics have thrown up a new lead. There was a, an item which was stuck in the kind of roll top neck of Sadie's jumper. What we did, we sent that through to our forensic science lab. He indicated that he believed that it, it may be from a stun gun. He said the mass produced, uh, really low cost. You think of this poor, poor lady who's, who's either been zapped with it straight away, you know, perhaps our offender has said, I want to talk to you. Our victim's walking away. If you think where a body was located, it was probably about 10 feet into the hallway. You know, is she leading the way and then she's done it on the back of her neck and then set about and then she's been stabbed to death, you know, 50, 50 knife blows. So, you know, absolutely top end this for me. And, you know, where she got this stun gun from. Sarah Williams' best friend, riding instructor Katrina Walsh, has been brought in for questioning. This is Katrina Walsh and she's here on suspicion of murder. Um, she's been arrested in um, Chester. Do you understand why she's been arrested? Yes, you don't I do. agree with it, but do you yep. understand why? I understand why, but I don't remember, I don't recall because I have a, I have a memory problem. If I don't write things down, I forget them within three, three sleeps. Two okay. sleeps, I can just about remember them. One sleep, it's hazy. Three sleeps, it's gone. Oh, I will tell you everything I know. Not yet. Right. I will be asking you any questions in yeah. relation to this matter at the desk. Right, yeah. It's my job as custody sergeant to look after you and your welfare and make sure yeah. you're treated properly. I'm not quite the investigation itself, but it's done that. So yeah. if, if at some point you want me to notify someone you're here, I will do that for you. At this moment, you better to tell David. Who's David? David's the one who's staying with, because he'll be expecting me back. Okay. Is David a partner or just a friend? He's a partner of Sarah. <laughs> Yeah. Who's, at the, who's at the centre of all of this? Ah. And he doesn't believe she did it. But I've, I've been really worried because I'd, I've had that note to myself that she might have done it. In which case, you know, I've been petrified. Because until I knew whether... For sure, I mean, because, because now I've forgotten. I did. I, I couldn't be sure. I also couldn't be sure if I'd done Katrina, it. Katrina, yeah. if, if you had a sister here now, yeah. you would be advised not to comment at all on the allegations. Uh -huh. I know it's an unsolicited comment. Um, and it's I want to tell everybody what I know before I forget it. During the arrest, Katrina Walsh, who claims to have a short-term memory, told officers about a note she wrote in her diary, which could relate to the murder. So is she trying to say that that's in the diary? That, that, she's... That, that if it all goes up, say by the stream, by the southwest of Zephy's Field and high above the saddle, that was in this loose page in the diary, but she has no idea what that means. I thought Zephy was a place. Zephy's a horse. Zephy's a horse. Yeah, yeah, I just realised that in custody <laughs> when she said, someone's going to have to look after my horse, Zephy. Right. So I realised then. She said, you can't remember what that means. But she said, you had to tell me before she forgot and she flushed the page down the toilet. Yeah. She's told one of the jailers that she um, keeps a diary because she forgets things and she uh, might have done something wrong. She's terrified of Sarah and believes if Sarah had asked her to do something or destroy something, she'd have been terrified and done it. She also mentioned hiding something near the stream where her horse is kept, either there or up near the saddle. got a suggestion she's come here, she's made reference to a horse, a effort, a field, she has a stable here that the horse is kept in. Obviously we've got a list of items that we are particularly looking for, so the teams are briefed on what we might be looking for. A pointed weapon, potentially knife, of no further description unfortunately. Uh, some suggestion of a stun gun, like a taser. Mobile phones, Apple devices, vehicle keys and receipts including financial documentation. It's a very big farm, uh, 58 stables, 12 fields. My opinion, a conservative estimate will be it will take, uh, take us a very long time to search this properly. As the search at the farm continues, the investigation team have unearthed further evidence. She 
she's in a car she's in Manchester. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while she tells us she's in bed in a knickers fast asleep, she's walking out of the house with a another in her outdoor clothes going to a car. This morning I was at 95, this afternoon I was at 99 and now I'm about 110. Yeah. The guilty oh omit has flipped. Oh, why is she not going to knock on me? She will do tomorrow. Why is she not now? Because she wants to talk. She's, she wants to tell you. she's a psychopath. Detectives Brian and Keith are keen to challenge Sarah Williams with all the CCTV evidence, including new footage around the suspicious flower delivery one week before the murder. No, I, I, think, well, I think we'll show the footage to both of them in the interview. Right. And we'll explain on the disclosure that there is footage and we will be shown to yeah. in the interview. We've got CCTV evidence of them delivering the flowers, which puts numerous holes in Sarah's tale. She's adamant she was in Health Show alone. So it's going to be a very interesting interview to see her reaction to the CCTV on the telephony. She was very confident in the first interview. And I think that confidence is waning now. I think she's realising that um, things are going to get uh, things are getting tricky, and they're going to get trickier for her. And I think that is why she'll probably go no comment now. We've CCTV evidence that shows you, as you've just seen, at Haslam's in Tesco, inside the store on the 7th of January. No you attended Tesco with a specific task in mind, didn't you? No comment. You didn't want us to know, did you? No comment. What I'm going to show you next, Sarah, is CCTV from Sunbank Road, and it shows two figures with a bunch of flowers walking down the road towards Sarah's house. Have you and Kate gone there to check it's the right house? No comment. Why did you send Kit to the door? Why weren't you brave enough to go yourself? Is it because you now say that you recognise it? We've CCTV evidence. It shows two persons leaving Williams address and walk along Trebles Road time on the 14th of January 2016. You've explained to us you were ill in bed because you've been sick. Can you explain any of that to me? No comment. That's no comment to all the questions we've put to her. Her demeanour has changed dramatically. She's gone from, there's been a lot of sitting forward and eye contact between me and her in the previous interviews. She's really gone into a shell and I can only begin to imagine what's going through her mind right now. If she wants to answer no comment, it can, can help us further down the line. Obviously it's frustrating because you want them to tell you what they've done. We all want to know, don't we? What she's done, why she's done it, how she's gone in, what she's done first, why she's stabbed her, how she's stabbed her, how she used to stun gun. We might not get that from her. And so that's frustrating. We're at the house of a, of a suspect who's been arrested. As you can see here, um, there's numerous items been seized throughout the day. We've been here for just over five hours now. This is the main bedroom of the house. I think there was 68 exhibits from this bedroom alone. Obviously looking for, for any knives, uh, any other sharp objects, um, anything, specks of blood on shoes. One of the items seized from the house has caught the attention of Detective Superintendent Paul Withers. We're working very, very hard on a specific telephone uh, that has been recovered from uh, Sarah Williams' home address. That's an old Nokia. That was, I believe, found underneath the bed. Uh, we believe she had that phone with her on the night of the murder. The very first call it makes is to uh, Crystal Holidays. It's a 14 second call, which we know is um, Sarah Williams' employers. Yeah. Um, there's very little use of it then on the 7th until 7 minutes past 3 in the afternoon. When it makes a 17 second call to Hartley Taylor Medical Communications. All right, has, everybody, can, has everybody got their head around that? Yeah. yeah. She, ring, she uses that phone that she's clearly took to another job uh, and she uses it in the morning to ring her workplace and then in the afternoon she rings Sadie's workplace. The information from the phone has also helped with another critical line of inquiry, the suspicious Renault Clio. Well, from the research we've done on a phone, we've got some numbers. From those numbers, they were all people that were selling vehicles. We went to the last one in the list thinking, 
if there's no more activity after that, she's bought that car. And lo and behold, the gentleman's disclosed that he sold the car, a blue Clio, to a lady who paid cash. So we've got the registration number, we know what the car is. Right, where is it? Yeah, that, that car will be absolutely saturated with blood. Up, we need that car back tonight, ladies and gents. Finding the car is crucial, as it could forensically link the suspect to the crime. But so far, attempts to find it using number plate recognition cameras have proved frustrating. That is a Renault Clio. Sergeant Mark Sharples has now worked out why it's taken them so long to identify the vehicle. It looks very much like an 8. And the NPR system has read that as an 8, but you know, the actual picture of the car is not Toyota Yaris, it's a Renault Clio. So, so basically, mate, it should be a 3, so you made it into an 8. Yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Eh? So, well done. <laughs> you're as, good as, you're you're as good as your last job, Sharples. That's a good job. Armed with the correct number plate, it's only a matter of time before the police locate the Clio. Control to Sierra Alpha Car 2. And very quickly, they have a breakthrough in a car park 55 miles from the murder scene. What else is it? I'll just put him on, all right? Andy, how you doing, mate? Absolutely fantastic, mate. Great work, pal. That's the last cell sighting of Sarah's phone. This is the location of where um, it's been found, so I'll just bear with you. Yeah. Plot that for you. In the middle of a car park, there's no issues with it. Um, it appears to be showing its original plate, but they do look like there's remnants of sticky tape yeah. over, the, over the three. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Adrian. You are brighter than you look. We've located the suspect vehicle we're looking for, the uh, Renault Clio. So what we will do from here is we will arrange a full forensic recovery so effectively nobody touches that car, not even the people doing the recovery. The potential in that vehicle is huge for blood transfer because the offender has not had a chance to clean themselves, to wash themselves, to change the clothing. Uh, from CCTV footage we've got in a locality around um, Hampshire, the vehicle's gone off pretty sharpish after the offence, so they are going to be laden in blood, so it's, uh, it's a critical find for the investigation. Fifty-five-year-old riding instructor Katrina Walsh has been arrested for the murder of Sadie Hartley. Should we go? She claims to have a three-day memory and now faces her first interview under caution. <laughs> At the moment, it is still very unclear what her role has been throughout these proceedings. You know, it's very important that we are very sure-footed around that individual uh, to see whether or not she has had involvement in the death of Sadie. Do you know who murdered Sadie Yeah. All I can remember at the moment is that I knew that Sarah had killed someone. I'd been terrified for days, absolutely terrified for days while she was around. The very first question I asked you was, did you kill Sadie Hart? You said no. no. And then I said, do you know who killed? And you said yes. Who killed Sadie Hartley? So, how do you know that? Because she's at the core of this knot of panic in there. But, but I can't remember that she killed her. What can you remember that terrifies you about Sarah? I think I, I started to suspect that she was a psychopath. And that I was very close friends with the psychopath. I'm going to show you, Kit, three photographs of a road which is called Sunnybank Road. Okay. Do you remember Sarah in connection with this property? Ah, uh, yes. What does she instruct you to do? I, 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 I... Go, to, go to the door, knock, ask Mrs Hartley and hand the flowers. She wanted to find out where the ditch is. She wants to take Ian off the bitch. Walsh has been assessed when she initially arrived in custody here. 
you know, and they clearly deemed her to be fit. She was interviewed at length and she had a good uh, recollection of, of a lot of the stuff that went on. You know, I, I wouldn't know whether she has memory issues or not. My view is probably not. That was bought by Sarah in Germany. I basically went like that, that's out the good. folder, and as I went like that, yeah, that's fine. she that's went, good. Germany, 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 Germany! That's fine. fine. So, as it comes out, they've been on some form of road trip. We need to get a diaries out to find out when they've been to Germany. We've had some information today that suggests that Sarah Williams may have actually driven to Germany uh, to buy the stun gun, uh, which we fear she may have used to uh, incapacitate Sadie before she'd been stabbed. So, you know, this has been planned for a number of weeks, and, and again, you know, I, I find that quite chilling, really. Mrs Hartley is the bitch. Um, it's Ian's partner, isn't it? Mrs Hartley, she's Ian's partner, and it was like, um, she wants to get rid of her. She wants to get rid of her. She would kill her. She would kill her. And this is how she's talking. She is properly like a tramp. Obviously, we, we sent off the blood sample, didn't we, from uh, Sarah's home address. There was uh, a, a fragment of blood that was diluted on the bath. The results of that have come back. Sadie's uh, DNA profile is represented fully in that sample. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, that's an absolute cool All right, we're knackered. You know, well done. Yeah, we're moving forward. You know, I know I keep re reiterating and papping on. Let's not be complacent. Still need, need to nail down what has Kit's involvement been in this. You know, has she been exploited by Sarah? Which is, is certainly a hypothesis I think we need to consider. Uh, but it's now about really nailing it down. We've got to put everything to her now. We need to go into the day of the merger. We've, we've skated around it a long time now. So it's time to discuss weapons, injuries, how she's committed the murder. But the evidence now is getting so overwhelming and so compelling, and that blood, there's no other explanation from what she's told us so far about her relationship with Sadie as to how Sadie's blood could be in her bathroom. You have a Nokia phone that was seized when we've searched your home address. First call it makes is the phone number of Sadie Hartley's business. No comment. So Sarah, a victim of a really ferocious stabbing, we have her DNA in your bathroom. Is there any feasible reason how that could have happened? No comment. Sarah Williams has now been interviewed for just under six hours. We need to make sure that everything is completely watertight and there won't be any bits for the defence to pick on or any holes or loopholes or bits that we've missed that they can say, well, if you'd have asked my client at the time, she would have said, this lady needs justice, her family needs justice, somebody needs to be convicted for this murder, the right person needs to be convicted for this murder. My mum was just such a trusting, loving person that if there was an issue, all you had to do was talk to my mum. She never ever got confrontational, she never got cross, she was never angry, all she ever wanted to do was talk things through. Um, and I feel like if that had happened, this wouldn't have happened, and she would still be here with us today. It, it was pointless. Katrina Walsh will now be interviewed for a second time. This will be filmed to be used as evidence in court. With Sarah Williams refusing to talk, this testimony could prove to be crucial. What, what evidence is it that you've hidden? I've hidden a zapper, a knife, the soles of some boots. Tell me what a zapper is. It's, it's a black thing with, 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 with a squeezy squeezy and it's got prongs and it makes a horrible crackly 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 noise. The next item on this list, what does that say? A, a knife. Right, tell me about that. It's a knife, and I, I suspect I sus at the time at the time I suspected it's killed somebody. Okay, why do you suspect that? Because I've been told to destroy it. Who by Sarah? She got in my car and gave me bags with instructions to burn the clothes and the towels and everything. 
and utterly destroy everything else. Okay. I op- I, 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 I open the open the bag. I open the bag. Uh, that. Let okay. down, down. Come on, come on. She's done it. She's 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 done it. She's done it. She's done what? She's, 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 she's killed somebody. She's killed somebody. How do you know that? There's there's a there's there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a knife and and the, and the zapper and and. All right. I've got evidence. I've got evidence. Detectives investigating the horrific murder of Sadie Hartley now believe they have built up a compelling case against Sarah Williams. We've finished the interviews. Uh, CPS have authorised charge, so we're going to go and charge Sarah with Sadie Hartley's murder. It's not every day you get to charge someone with murder, is it? Sarah. Okay, Sarah, CPS have authorised us to charge you. So I am charging you with the offence of murder. Now, on the 14th of January 2016 at Helmshaw, you murdered Sadie Hartley, contrary to common law. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention now something which you later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Everyone will be relieved that we've got a charge, <clears throat> but like, this is where the, the really <clears throat> hard work starts now. We've got to get a case to court. I think there's going to be some decisions to be made around um, Kit, yeah. Katrina Walsh, because it's looking like uh, she's certainly assisted. Why has she trusted you to get rid of the evidence? If you're not involved in this, why has she trusted you? She wants to frame me for it. She wants to frame me for it or kill me and frame me for it. At that stage, that's all I can think. Why don't you walk into a police station and speak to the police? Because whenever I was in that, whenever I was that frightened, I was more frightened of her than anything else. I... Sadly, Kit, it shouldn't be me that you're sorry to. But and, oh, no, really I'm, I'm very, very deeply... But you shouldn't be sorry to me. No, I'm deeply sorry. I, I, I mean, that's, that's the... That, oh, God. Oh. Right. Okay. Right. Take that one for you. Am I right to get some You've got a full water there. A lot of people think, you know, when someone is charged with murder that all the work's been done. Really, really important to realise that all the hard work will now start and it's that attention to detail which gives that full picture and which can have a really, really significant bearing on the sentence. With forensics confident that there are considerable traces of blood in the car, the team can focus again on Katrina Walsh. Katrina, talk to us about Katrina. She thinks, and this is the theme throughout when we've been asking, why have you done this? We're playing Hunted. They've been watching a programme called Hunted, which is where you hide from the authorities. It's just a game. Nobody gets hurt. It's just a game. Is there anything about the murder weapon, the knife or the taser? She will be able to tell us where all these items are. Right. We clearly need to get her out. We need to get that evidence back and and, because it supports what she's telling us. The plan today is to go out and we're going to do something quite unusual. We're going to actually take her out to this farm where she's agreed to show us where she's concealed these items. If Katrina Walsh leads detectives to the murder weapon, it could prove damning against both her and Sarah Williams. Here, somewhere where I can get to the water and it'll be pushed into the mud somewhere down there, I think. Zapper, some odd oddments. 
a car key under those under those parts. Of something. You pointed then and you said now. Nah, show me where you pointed to. So where this horse, horse poo, poo is, because I put the horse poo on top so so that I could. Right. Then you said to me, zapper. Where's the zapper? In the under under, under some, this uh, uh, some, somewhere in that. Okay. So where did you go next? After doing that, I went up to the yard where the. Oh, come on. Show us. We'll follow it back up. Yep, follow it back up. She said on her walk round, she's pointed to places where she's put things. So uh, there's a knife and a taser. She's explained that she's pushed into the ground on the bank. Yeah, we found what initially looks like pepper spray with something underneath it. Is there a bar missing, Chris? Yep. Yes, there is. Yes, nice one. There was at the scene a, a barb that was recovered, we believe, from a stun gun. Uh, we've just recovered a stun gun as well, missing a, a barb, so there's just the one barb on there where there should be two. We've also recovered a car key. Uh, which we believe is of interest to the inquiry team as well. But the most vital item is undoubtedly the murder weapon. You put that on right there. Is it? You just pull it out and straight in there, don't you? It is so possible. Wow. Big in that. See the blood on the end? Yeah. Still got blood on it. Police are now convinced that Katrina Walsh played a willing and significant role in Sadie's murder. You are charged that on the 14th of January 2016 at Helmshaw murdered Sadie Hartley contrary to common law. No, I, I didn't, I didn't. Katrina, do you want to make any reply to that charge? No, we don't need to make Katrina, do you, know, do you want to make a reply or not? This is what we don't need to make. chilling actually when you consider the meticulous planning that has gone into this over a number of weeks. In the weeks ahead hopefully that will be presented before the Crown Court. With the trial looming, the team have built up a more complete picture of what took place and have discovered some compelling new evidence which further implicates both Williams and Walsh. When Katrina's house was searched, we found seized a lot of diaries. So I was allocated the task of going through the diaries and I've read through 2010 to 2015. The planning for the murder came a lot earlier than we thought it would have been, I think. It's about 18 months in advance that is the first mention of taking Sadie out or words to that effect. So Katrina's defence in interview was that she didn't know anyone was getting murdered, it was all a game. She did know somebody was getting murdered and she was very much implicit in that. She writes at one point, I may take part in, in this and I'm quite excited by it, I can't sleep. I think she has a sudden glass of sudden comfort to calm her nerves after the first day of planning. I think the relationship between them is quite a bizarre relationship. It's almost as if um, Katrina Walsh is almost infatuated with, with Sarah Williams and, and uh, the, there are parts where it appears that Sarah Williams may be financially exploiting mm -hmm. Katrina Walsh uh, as well as other people. You can see the page ripped out, pages ripped out there. There's two full pages, there's amendments, there's crossings out. But she obviously realises there's incriminating stuff in there or else she wouldn't have gone back and ripped key passages out. But having read these, I very much doubt she's got a memory issue because she's remembered that she needed to go back and cut things out. 
So she says, poked Sarah, who said she would ring. I guess Ian getting back has sent her craziness off again. Relaxed and got a call in the afternoon and Sarah came round, so got caught up in endless murder plots for Ian's other half. I'm going to be involved now, heaven help me. I have no moral qualms, just a serious don't let us get caught twinge. Her diaries have just completely blown her defence out of the water. August 2014, she's been writing about murdering Sadie, so she did know somebody was going to get killed, so it, it's really key evidence. With both defendants pleading not guilty, the trial is a long and painful process for Charlotte and the family. I want to be there every single day. I just want to hear everything to almost try and make sense of it. I don't know if it'll ever help myself or my brother. Um, I don't think anything will. I want to know why. Um, I don't think we'll ever get the answer why. I'm a little bit apprehensive this morning, if I'm honest. You know, in my time as, as a police officer, it, it's one of the most callous crimes I have ever investigated. The murder of Sadie is almost a, a, like a, a ruthless assassination. It, it's always on, on your mind that the trial could go the wrong way. Thankfully, it's only ever happened once to me in my service. Um, and again, if I'm brutally honest, something that haunts me still uh, probably will stay with me until the day I die. <laughs> You look at the the planning that has gone into this from from Williams and Walsh. You know, I almost think they they thought they were planning the perfect murder, and that clearly Williams thought she would she would be able to get away with this. Well, they're actually amateurs. After a trial that lasted over six weeks, the jury has reached a verdict. Uh, earlier today, um, Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh have been convicted of the brutal and senseless murder of Sadie Hartley at her home address in Helmshaw on the evening of uh, the 14th of January. Albeit Williams may have been the one that wielded the knife on this evening, there can be no doubt that Katrina Walsh was also heavily involved in this dreadful, dreadful crime. All right, look after yourself. Yeah. Sending whoever has done this to prison, of course that will put peace of mind in, you know, for myself and my brother, but it doesn't bring back my mum. And obviously, you know, 30 odd years in prison, it's... They're still here. My mum's not here anymore.